Welcome to St. John's Episcopal Church in Kingsville, Maryland. Over seven years ago, our congregation gathered and rallied together to restore our stained glass windows here in the stone church and in the chapel. And our congregation had worked tirelessly to raise money. Families had sponsored windows. And at this time, I will invite you to join me in a tour of our church and to meet some of those families who have sponsored windows. And before we go into that, the family members are here, and I would like to uh, start off this time in prayer. Our help is in the name of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Mercifully accept our offerings of these windows, which we dedicate to beautify the place of your sanctuary. In honor of Cecilia, Joachim, Mark, Henry, David, and in memory of your servants, Eleanor, Carrie, Anne, John, Florence and Emery, Mike and Wanda, Angeline, John and Lorraine, Norman, Earl and May Banks, and in honor of him who you have given to be light to the to light in the Gentiles, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who with you and the unity of the Holy Spirit lives and reigns world without end. Amen. Amen. So at this time, I would like to invite you as we walk around our, our sanctuary, our, our church, the first window here, the restored window, is the the window uh, celebrating the nativity of our Lord, the birth of Jesus. As the gospel story continues, the second window here is the flight to Egypt. And this was restored in memory of Angeline Downs and Angeline liked to sit in this, in, in this pew and being close to this window. So this had a special significance for her. The following window is Jesus teaching in the temple as a boy. And this window was restored in memory of Mike and Wanda Barron. Our next window here is the baptism of Jesus by John and the Jordan River. that Satan continued to, um, to do to Jesus. And this, the, these three windows at the back of the church, the two are the saints of the church, but the center window is of Saint Cecilia. And Tony and Maxine Rising, parishioners of our church, had sponsored this window to be restored. And I would invite them at this time if they would like to say a few words about, about this window. We chose. Would you like Cecilia back there? Yes, Cecilia, come on up here. <laughs> We chose 
wants to sponsor this window for two reasons. One, <coughs> our son and Cecilia and his mother are music teachers, so music plays a very large part in their family. We also, of course, picked it because our granddaughter Cecilia's name is up there, so we put her name <laughs> there too. <coughs> Excuse me. Do you want to say anything, Maxine? Next window is um, the uh, the story where Jesus invites the children. Let all the children come to me. And it's always such a comforting window as we are all children of God, no matter what age we are, that we can go to Him as a child of God. This next window is. Jesus and, and Peter and the stormy seas. Jesus walking on the water and Peter walking towards him and he falters and with his faith. And Jesus comes and picks him up. It's also comforting to know that when we falter, Jesus is there to help us. next window is Jesus knocking at the door and this was restored in memory of Terry Beats. one of the things that I love about this window is that um, if you notice the doors uh, the, the pictures or or stained glass windows uh, when Jesus knocking at the door, you don't really notice an outside handle for him to pull the door open. He's invited to be let in. And I will move over this way. And um, one of our parishioners, Ann Whelan, um, I, will, I will let her speak for the window. Uh, I chose this window of the Good Shepherd because that is an image that I have of Episcopalians or Christians, uh, of our Lord protecting us, looking out for us, giving us a concern for others. And 
I dedicated it to my husband, who was a World War II vet, a cradle Episcopalian, as was I, and so it had a lot of meaning for me, personally. Thank you. This next window is, um, is Jesus praying in Gethsemane. And if Anne would like to share a couple words about who it is, it is restored and in honor. It, it, it's both. Anne House, um, this window is dedicated in memory of her as an Episcopalian in St. John's Church. I've known her for a long time, met her when she was first um, giving of her talent musically to uh, residents at Stella Maris. She came here and uh, was a member of the choir and uh, participated for many, many years, giving her voice to music within the church. And those in the church that um, for one reason or another may have been sick or something traumatic happened in their life, and always had a word of kindness for them, shared with them through poetry. Um, a very humble person within our parish and deserving of a window. Uh, she dedicated to raise money for the window, not with a lump big sum, but from her pennies that weekly she would get together and she would donate a small amount. And then a couple weeks later, she would dedicate another small amount. And she did it throughout the seven years that we were raising money for the windows. Um, she was a good friend. Thank you. And her husband, David House, is, is still, uh, uh, alive and with us so um, and he was a faithful member of the choir as well loved the church um, loved Dan and so um, as I as we had mentioned that it is restored in in memory of Anne and in honor of David as we continue our journey around the church this next window has been restored in memory of Eleanor Gebler. Eleanor Gebler was a matriarch in this church. She served the church in various ministries. And as we make our way up to the altar, The last window down here in the nave is the empty tomb. When the women go to anoint Jesus to finish the burial preparations, they are greeted by an angel pointing to the empty tomb, saying that he is not here, but he is risen. in this sanctuary is the ascension window. Jesus, after he was crucified and resurrected from the dead, and after teaching his disciples and commissioning, to go to, commissioning them to go out into the world, he ascends into heaven. And just a, a little reflection for myself, on Sunday mornings when the sun is bright, as I celebrate the Eucharist, 
the full reflection of the window is seen in the chalice, in the cup. And I remember uh, first time I saw it being um, thrown off guard, but just filled with emotion that as we're celebrating the Last Supper, the commemoration of our Lord before his death, and that when we consume and partake in the Eucharist, that we are raised to new life, this window and the ascension of Jesus and the promise of coming again and his and and his, his whole life work just is for for me as a priest as I celebrate is is just powerful. We have a couple more windows in the sacristy, so I will invite you to join me. Our sacristy looks like any sacristy as the day before her service. So um, this is Liz Healy, Elizabeth Healy, and I will let her speak for the windows. Well, the, first of all, the uh, cabinetry in the sacristy was given in memory of my father by my mother a number of years ago. And then when it came time to restore the windows, she felt that it would be a, a great finish to the project to restore the windows in the sacristy also in memory of my dad. All right, thank you. And so this concludes our stained glass window tour of, um, of the Stone Church. And so we will be um, heading over and we will be starting a new video for our chapel.